guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today, we're finally talking about Modifier 57. What is Modifier 57? That is the Decision for Surgery Modifier that's only appended to Evaluation and Management Codes. Now, when do we apply this Modifier 57 to Evaluation and Management Codes? When the provider makes the decision for surgery the same day or if the surgery is going to be performed within 24 hours. And when I say surgery, I am referring to major surgeries, major 90-day global procedure surgeries, okay? Um, a good example of this, and I'm always going to go back to orthopedics, if the patient comes in with a fracture and the provider decides to go ahead and do a closed treatment of that fracture in the same day, they're able to get the evaluation and management code uh, with that 57 modifier along with the either close treatment or the reduction depending on what they did with the patient for that fracture in that same day. Okay, so again, as long as it is done the same day or within 24 hours, you are good to go on that 57 modifier. Now, what happens if they've already decided to do, if they do decide to do surgery, right? Say it is June 1st and they decide to do surgery on June 5th. Would you append a 57 modifier to that um, June 1st encounter? No, you would not because the procedure was not done in the same day. The procedure was done on June 5th. So they would be able to get the, um, the cognitive work of they decided to do a surgery, but you would not be able to append that 57 modifier to that evaluation and management code the decision for surgery would obviously go into their, be factored into their medical decision making, okay? Now, if it was a patient that was either um, elective procedure, obviously, or if it was um, with no risk factors or with high risk factors, uh, that is something else to pay attention to. Uh, is your provider documenting if the patient is high risk or not? Um, a good example of like a high risk patient is obviously, um, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I'm starting to cough again. Oh, I hate it. Okay. If a patient uh, goes in and they're going to have a surgery and let's just say that they have uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Obviously, this is going to put them in a higher risk category because if they have to go under anesthesia, um, they have to do special things because uh, the patient can't be put in a certain position when they are um, going under anesthesia because it is dangerous um, for somebody that is has that condition. Um, also, if a patient is a diabetic and their blood sugars are not controlled, it is going to be harder for them to heal because the risk of infection goes up because they are not controlled. Um, and even just having diabetes is also... Uh, you know, a risk factor as well. Uh, chronic kidney disease, hypertension, these are things that uh, should be noted if they are uh, impacting the provider's ability to decide to do a surgery as well. Um, if, they, if they are, if you look on your evaluation and management tool, it will tell you uh, if the procedure is with identified risk factors or with no identified risk factors, there is a difference. It's It goes from moderate medical decision making when they have a decision for elective procedure or elective procedure uh, with no identified risk factors versus a higher risk um, for a uh, elective procedure with identified risk factors, okay? And if your provider is saying that this patient is high risk, please make sure that they are documenting. Um, and this, this goes back to clinical documentation improvement. Uh, I do not have this credential officially, uh, but it is something that is important for all coders to know and understand. You don't have to necessarily have the title of clinical documentation improvement specialist to know uh, that you can look at a provider's documentation and see if they are making sure that they are documenting everything. And as I always uh, mention, talk with your providers. Uh, get and build a good relationship with them because a lot of times if they're doing things and they don't think that they can get credit, they're not going to document it. Um, but if you're talking to them and asking them and, and giving them uh, feedback and, and telling them, hey, what are you doing here? Or if you see that they're like ordering additional tests and maybe they're missing diagnosis, like, hey, doc, what's going on here? You know, you ordered a, a, a you know, blood sugar test and there's no nothing. 
supporting the use of this code. You know, what's going on? And does this patient have an issue or are they diabetic? Things like that. This is where, again, clinical documentation improvement comes into play. So knowing how to appropriately apply modifiers and talking with your providers is very, very important. Um, I know that it's not possible at every facility. There are rules in certain facilities about talking to providers. Sometimes it is the, the onus there is on one person. Um, sometimes it's on a team of people and they just want the coders to just code. Uh, at my facility, I, I am, you know, all of the coders are, are responsible for doing that, for communicating with the providers and talking with them and, and making sure that everything is, is documented like they're supposed to be. So uh, that is one of the things that I like doing. I love doing that part. <laughs> uh, and eventually I will get there where I have that credential. But uh, again, one thing at a time. So I hope this uh, clarifies the use of Modifier 57. If you have any other questions, please let me know and I will catch up with y'all again on the next video. Uh, so if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. All right, I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.